I think creating external space so people can get the hell out of those buildings. You know, I mean, it's all very well. I think probably New York is a good example, isn't it? You know, New York is like one big building. And New York without Central Park would be a completely different place to New York with Central Park. And so if you're going to, I'm all for um, concentrated living. And, um, but I think for me, if you don't have the opportunity to get out of that space and go and run around in Central Park and do all of those things, then you don't have livable space. Mixed use buildings, which I think are probably the tall buildings of the future. Uh, I think probably we're seeing the most advances being made in that area at the moment in, in Asia. Um, so you, we have to look for cities and high rises that provide at the same time residential, uh, um, office, uh, commercial, retail and other facilities. Uh, that might be in one building, if the building is very big, that might be several buildings um, as neighbors. But uh, to make a lively environment means for me to have a completely mix of use. Living conditions should inform a residential building. Uh, an office building is uh, influenced by quite different conditions. And when we see all these big mixed-use buildings in this country and around the world, we don't know where the parking garage is and where the hotel is and where the office is. You know, put some reflective glass in front of it and it heals all the grimes. Like if we're building high-rise building, we have a now that the law asks for, for, for example, a green ratio on the, on right. the ground, but not in the sky. Uh, but since, I think since the city is going vertical, we should uh, you know, have a law for that. So people can actually have a public space and the landscape, whatever, uh, in the sky. And making it fit into the big urban environment. Because when you, when you have just this big building isolated, and then you have to go elsewhere to enjoy your needs um, or other uses, obtain, you know, go to, go to other buildings to get other purposes done, that, that really uh, is not an achieving thing just to have a, a building isolated on its own. It has to work, it has to fit right into the, the urban environment. And that, that's why we're now calling them habitats. What we need more of is focusing on where and how the high rise comes together with the environment at the ground surface. Okay? Uh, you, some cities are focusing on these very, very tall buildings, but they're not focusing equally well on what's happening when they meet the, meet the ground. I mean, to have a really vibrant urban environment, you need ground, ground activity. And you need buildings that relate to the people on the ground. Even Hancock, which is a symbol for, for, the, for the very, very best engineering in tall building, right? But on the ground floor, it is a disaster. It is a disaster. It comes down and, and says, I don't care for you, I don't <laughs> like you, stay away. It's like, it's like an artistic thing. And, and I think this is one thing we have to solve if it comes to the question of a livable building. Do you think the, uh, the, the super tall is a multiplication of the land forever without any public spaces within it? Or do you see this as a city inside a city where there are spaces of social value, of public spaces, atriums, and things that actually um, allow people to socialize within the building? Because don't forget, these are structures that thousands of people live. I mean, they're small towns in and itself. So they need to integrate well into the city they exist, but they also have to become a neighborhood. We need more social incubators. We need, we need, we need buildings that don't isolate people from each other, but actually encourage interaction. And that is, uh, for me, an even more important reason than the technical one of building motion, to think about linked skyscrapers, to think about the possibility that social exchange between buildings doesn't have to exist only at ground level. Today, you know that the, the building has qualities on its own, but you see the same qualities everywhere. And, and so the, you are losing a sense of place. This is what we've learned. And the people identify with where they live. It's a, it's a sense of place, but it's also a sense that they want a, a stronger community connection. So, uh, you know, they're not trying to hide from people. I think people want to, to feel that they belong somewhere and that uh, they're identifying with the places that they live in.